the, the porn video that she decided to do with, with, with X-Pac, which makes me laugh because if he goes around and turns around and puts D Generation X into the Hall of Fame and X-Pac as a member of that, then he's the biggest hypocrite on the planet. So you're not going to put China in because she did a, a porn video, but you're going to put Sean Waltman in the Hall of Fame, who was in that same video, because he was a little, he was the member of your your clique. But so was China. China is also the only female to hold a male major title in the WWE as a former Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion. So she's got more credential than X Pac. X Pac. Never held a major world title. He never held the Intercontinental. He was a cruiserweight. He was a uh, a tag team champion. Yeah, he did. He did a lot of little things for the business. You know, one of those cruiserweights that did a lot of high flying and very, very physical, but agile in the ring. Not taking anything away from what Sean Waltman did in the ring. But if you want to go strictly on credentials. And you put him on the pedestal next to China, and you say, "All right, this is what Waltman did. This is what China did. Who belongs in the Hall of Fame?" And I will say, probably seventy-five percent will say China belongs in the Hall of Fame. And then the only reason why that Waltman will get in the Hall of Fame is because Triple H will put him there as a member of D Generation X. So, might not happen. Might happen. I don't know, but it shouldn't happen. Let's put it that way. Sean Waltman should not be a member of the WWE Hall of Fame if China is not because of the same reasons. Plain and simple. You know, what's good for one is good for the other. So uh, we're a couple minutes uh, away from Low Life Louie giving us a call. Um, reached out to him. He's going to give us a little call earlier today, which is awesome. Uh, and then after that, we're going to have our Jobbers Tournament. So... Um, we're going to play a little promo of upcoming superstars of wrestling uh, that's coming to you soon. So uh, sit back and relax, and uh, and we'll be back in a little while with Low Life Louie. In the year 1775, the sounds of gunfire brought in the American Revolution. Then around the 1800s, the sounds of machinery brought in the Industrial Revolution. And on April 10th, 2015... A new sound brings in the SOW revolution. USA! 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 It's the Superstars of Wrestling Live presents Revolution. Featuring WWE Hall of Famer, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And former WWE Tag Team Champion, Scotty Two Hotty. Advance for one ringside is $25. All other advanced seats are $20. And kids and seniors are $17. All tickets are $25 at the door. For ticket information, call 718-207-5032. And PayPal your advance tickets to swf.live1 at gmail.com. Stand up and be at the Avenel Columbia Council, 109 Morrissey Avenue, Avenel, New Jersey. The superstars of wrestling live, where generations collide. You think you know me? Hey guys, do you like pro wrestling? Of course you do. It's the greatest thing in the world. Hi, my name is Emil J. You may have seen me as the ring announcer for Combat Zone Wrestling. On Point Wrestling, Dojo Wars, and WSU, just to name a few. But now I'm proud to announce that the Funkenstein Wrestling Superstore is the premier location for wrestling merchandise. Every Saturday and Sunday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. in English Town, New Jersey, at the English Town Flea Market, booth number 35 in the Green Building, the Funkenstein Wrestling Superstore has it all. Everything from DVDs and figures from around the world to t-shirts and lucha masks in both kids and adult sizes. And much more. Even tickets to upcoming events. Log on to Facebook.com slash Funkenstein INC for full details on everything they have to offer, including weekly specials and where they'll be vending at this weekend. So check out Facebook.com slash Funkenstein INC 
and take the short drive to Englishtown, New Jersey and visit my friends at the Funkenstein Wrestling Superstore this weekend to start or add to your wrestling collection. And hey, tell them MLJ sent you. The Funkenstein Wrestling Superstore, the main event of wrestling collectibles. to welcome our guest of the show today, one half of the heavy hitters, a staple in the New Jersey independent wrestling community, Low Life Louis Ramos Jones uh, joins us. Louis, welcome to the show. Coach Kevin, thank you for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here, man. We have a lot to talk about. I mean, there's a lot going on um, in, in your life, a lot of things that uh, I would have to say were unexpected. And, very much so, very much so. <laughs> uh, before we get to that, you know, because um, it's kind of like capping off an ending before opening the can. So I, I'd like to I'd like to ask you like the, the basic question I, I ask all our guests that are in this wrestling business. How did you get into this wrestling business? Well, I'll shoot, and I've told everybody the story. I was a lifelong Hulkamaniac. Hulk Hogan was... You know, some people pray to Jesus, some people pray to Allah. As a child, I prayed to Hulk Hogan, and that's no word of a lie. He was my God, my inspiration. I come from a broken family. He was like uh, like the male figure in my life that I looked up to. I wanted to be like Hogan. As I got older, I started watching more and more wrestling as it became available on TV. And I started watching Puerto Rican wrestling. Okay. And a staple of Puerto Rican wrestling back in the mid-80s was that of the Butcher. And I looked in the mirror and I said... I love Hulk Hogan, but as a little short, fat, dark skin kid, I resembled that dude the butcher more. <laughs> so I said, I like this guy. And he hits people with forks and he makes them bleed. You know, but as time went on, I remained a fan, but I didn't, didn't have any direction that I wanted to wrestle <laughs> until 1995 when ECW came around and I got my hands on a videotape. And on that tape was the... Ian Rotten versus Axel Rotten barbed wire baseball bat match. Oof. And from that moment, I became transfixed with becoming a wrestler, doing that same type of match. And I followed my dream. I threw away eight scholarships to prestigious universities, the most the famous one of them being Duke, to follow my wrestling dream and get hit with a baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire. So let's ask you this question. Do you regret at any point giving up those those uh, those scholarships to follow your wrestling dream? You know what? Now that I'm a father and I have two children to take care of, and like I said, I come from a broken home. My father did nothing for me. It might have been easier to make money or more money than I make in a regu- at a regular job. It was, I probably was a higher level education. Of course, more money comes along with that, but I have zero regrets. The people that I've married, that I've met in the wrestling business, the friends that I've made, uh, the fact that I met my wife through wrestling and everything else, mm-hmm. wrestling has given me everything that I've ever wanted, and it, it'll, I'll, I'd be hard-pressed to say that I regret anything. Okay, that's fair. Where where did you uh, first bump into uh, and meet your, uh, which would lead to uh, your, ta- new, your tag team partner, Steve Monster Mac? Uh, me and Master Mac went to the same high school, upping those to each other. I'm a few years older than him. I had a friend, uh, Jamar Sanchez, they call him Scotty. He was known to wrestling fans a few years ago as uh, Mace, one half of the Christopher Street Connection, now, of course, retired. Uh, Mace had gone uh, to elementary school with Steve and at one point introduced us. Because Steve had seen me walking in the halls in high school with my Hulk Hogan backpack. 
<laughs> and he had one time asked his buddy, he goes, hey, you know the guy with the Hulk Hogan backpack? And the guy goes, yeah, he's in my so-and-so class. I think it was government class. And then one time we hung out, and between myself and uh, Scotty and Steve, we had this plan to make this like underground wrestling thing called Insane World Wrestling, IWW. <laughs> and uh, we brought along Brandon, who is, uh, you know, Shu is Loki, who is uh, Monster Max's cousin, mm -hmm. Max cousin. And as kids, we all started. We uh, met guys that were doing public access TV in Manhattan. They led us to this venue called Arena Puerto Rico, where, uh, you know, guys that were, uh, I guess, in the underground scene, they were doing, you know, live shows in front of people, but they were kind of underground at the time because okay. they were getting ready to get their license. One of those guys was Homicide. And Homicide took us under his wing because he saw that we were hungry, that we were willing to do anything. I mean, we were willing to take any beating, do whatever it took, you know, carry bags, set up rings, set up chairs, stay up to the middle of the night, walk the ring back and forth through flights of stairs on weekends to, you know, to watch the guys do the live show, get paid and stale hot dogs and stale beer. <laughs> but that's what we wanted to do, and we did it. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't for Homicide, probably half of the of the workers that have come out of New York wouldn't be as talented as they are and wouldn't have the, uh, the just the toughness that they have. And that's something that was passed on from us to guys that went to the doghouse, and it all stems from him. Okay, um, you named some some key names there, and, and Loki and um, Homicide. Uh, I got to actually see uh, you wrestle on a couple of uh, shows that Homicide was a part of, and he's a he's a different breed of wrestler. Uh, he's not he's not one of your as I like to call him the the upright the vertical wrestler. <laughs> He, um... yeah, he he could do everything, and, and he, he he basically does his own thing. He's never sold out. He has done everything his way, mm -hmm. and that's to be respected, especially in a business where a lot of it isn't like that. A lot of it is corporate and structured and stuff like that. He has basically done it his way, and he's made a hell of a name for himself. So, And he's, he, is he still currently uh, out on leave now? Yeah, he's actually uh, he uh, put up on Facebook. He's going to go in for... Uh, labrum surgery on, eight, on April 7th and myself and all the boys wish him the best of luck. I was actually spending a little bit of time with him yesterday at uh, Jersey All Pro. Mm -hmm. Jersey All Pro Wrestling asked me to referee a match last night and I was very honored to come back home, so to speak, to the company that gave me my first break and it was real cool to be part of Jersey All Pro and I was with, again, with Steve, with Loki, with uh, Homicide and you know, it felt good to be back in the fold, especially with the guys that I came up with. Well, tell us a little bit about that last night. I heard it was it was a great show, and um, yeah, I heard it. I, I heard it, to, it, it hit home with you a little bit. Yeah, I had a chance to uh, referee a match. It was my first, you know, uh, non non wrestling booking in the last few months, and uh, I know you're going to ask me that later, so I'll save it for later. Okay. Uh, so it was good to uh, to get back in the ring, to be in front of fans again. I got a chance to referee a match featuring the Necro Butcher and the Hooligans, who are big in the Midwest, against the Viking War Party. Uh, these three guys, big guys, old school gimmick, and uh, it, it was just a war all over the Runway Rec Center. They bowled into the crowd, and at the end of the match, I kind of screwed the Necro Butcher. Me and the Necro Butcher have had arguments in the past, and it's never led to a match. And uh, who know who knows? But uh, hopefully, you know, it'll see me getting back into Jersey All Pro maybe as a ref, as a troubleshooter or something more. Yeah, or you can just come down and uh, you can be, a, you know, take somebody under your wing, become a manager and, uh, you know, play play your Bobby Heenan role. Yeah, I would love to do something like that. I mean, if you loved, if you loved Hogan, you had to hate Bobby Heenan growing up. <laughs> oh, yeah, but as I got older, I, I could have, his commentary was second to them. Him and Gorilla Monsoon, to me, were the greatest commentary team of all time. You know, I, I, I got into conversations with um, some of the the younger fans, and um, and I, I tried to explain to them, because they, you know, they're always complaining about Michael Cole, and I, I personally like Michael Cole. Michael Cole is who Michael Cole is. He's going to he's gonna do what he's told to do. He's not he's not going to go outside the box. He's, he plays it safe, and I can't, I can't fault him for that. Um... 
you know, Jerry Lawler kind of got dry and stale over the years, and, you know, they moved.